North Dakota has 35 billion tons of lignite coal reserves capable of being mined with today's technology. If 35 million tons of lignite were mined each year, these reserves would last about a thousand years. Currently, about 30 million tons of lignite are mined in North Dakota each year. That's enough coal to fill 300,000 railroad cars, creating a train 3,000 miles long. What happens to all the coal mined in North Dakota? About 80% of it is used to generate electricity. Another 18% is used to make synthetic natural gas, while the remaining 2% is used for a variety of purposes, such as oil well drilling mud, home heating, and agricultural processing. Producing electricity from lignite is by far the largest use of this North Dakota resource. Even though the state's population is about 650,000 people, the seven North Dakota power plants using lignite can produce enough electricity to serve more than two million people. That's a city twice the size of Minneapolis. The amount of electricity a power plant is capable of generating is measured in megawatts. A megawatt is equal to one million watts. One megawatt of electrical generating capacity is enough to light up 10,000 100 watt light bulbs. All of the coal-fired power plants in North Dakota have a generating capacity just over 4,000 megawatts. In comparison, the Garrison Dam, a hydroelectric plant, has a capacity of 480 megawatts. Nearly 90% of all electricity generated in North Dakota is produced from lignite. Where are North Dakota's coal-fired power plants, and how much power do they generate? Where do they get the lignite they use? Here are the plants listed in order of size. The Coal Creek Station, located near Underwood, is the state's largest plant with 1,100 megawatts of generating capacity. It is operated by Cooperative Power and receives its coal from the nearby Falkirk mine. The Antelope Valley Station is a 900 megawatt plant north of Beulah, operated by Basin Electric Power Cooperative. It receives its coal from the Coteau Properties Company Freedom Mine next to the plant. Mincota Power Cooperative runs the 660 megawatt Milton Young Station at Center. Its coal supply comes from the BNI Coal Center Mine near the plant. The Leland Old Station at Stanton is another Basin Electric Power Plant. This 650 megawatt plant receives coal from the Freedom Mine, which is operated by Coteau Properties Company. The 420 megawatt Coyote Station south of Beulah is operated by Montana Dakota Utilities, and receives its coal from the nearby Beulah Mine, owned by Knife River Coal Mining Company. The Stanton Station at Stanton is run by United Power Association and can generate 180 megawatts of electricity. Coal for this plant is hauled a short distance by train from the Freedom Mine, operated by Coteau Properties Company. The 100 megawatt Heskett Station at Mandan is another Montana Dakota Utilities plant. It receives its coal by rail from the Knife River Beulah Mine. The only major power plant outside North Dakota which uses lignite is the 440 megawatt Big Stone Station in northeastern South Dakota, operated by Ottertail Power Company. Lignite for this plant is shipped by rail from Knife River's Gascoin Mine near Bowman. How does a power plant use lignite to generate electricity? In most cases, lignite coal from a mine next to the power plant is hauled by truck to a crushing facility known as a tipple. The crushed coal is usually transported from the tipple to the plant by conveyor belt. The lignite is stored in a stockpile outside the plant. Another conveyor belt carries the lignite from the stockpile to storage bunkers inside the plant. From there, the coal goes to the plant's crushers, where it is sized for the type of boiler the plant uses. The electrical generation process begins when the coal is burned to produce heat. The heat is measured in British thermal units, also known as BTUs. One BTU is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree. Lighting a book of matches all at once produces about 25 BTUs of heat. On the average, a pound of North Dakota lignite produces about 6,700 BTUs of heat. A simple demonstration shows how heat is used to generate electricity. When the water in a tea kettle is boiled, it produces steam. The steam escaping from the kettle's spout 
creates enough force to spin this pinwheel. But it isn't powerful enough to do much more than that. However, if the force of the steam was greater, the spinning motion of the pinwheel could be used to rotate a magnet on a shaft within a wire coil. This crude generator would produce an electric current that could be used to light a bulb. Using a small generator, human energy can produce enough electricity to make a light bulb glow. But you would wear out quickly if you tried to keep the light bulb lit for more than a few minutes. The principle of generating electricity is relatively simple. But generating enough electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to meet the energy demand created by millions of people requires much larger, more complex equipment. The process at a lignite-fired power plant is basically the same as the steam-driven pinwheel generator in the demonstration. In a lignite-fired power plant, a boiler produces the steam instead of a tea kettle. A boiler resembles a huge box made out of pipes called boiler tubes. Water is circulated through the boiler tubes as lignite is burned inside the box. The heat created causes water in the boiler tubes to boil, converting it to steam. This steam comes out of the boiler at extremely high pressure and temperature. In the power plant, a turbine takes the place of the pinwheel in our earlier demonstration. The high pressure steam is directed through a series of blades which spin the turbine. As the steam leaves the turbine, it's cooled and condensed back into water so it can be used to repeat the process. The water used to make steam must be very clean and pure to avoid leaving mineral deposits that can plug or corrode a power plant's machinery. Temperatures inside a boiler can reach more than 2,000 degrees. The temperature of the steam coming out of the boiler is about 1,000 degrees, hot enough to make metal glow dull red. The steam leaves the boiler under tremendous pressure, about 2,400 pounds per square inch. This is about the same as if the entire weight of a small car was concentrated on an area one square inch in size. The steam is carried by a pipe to the plant's turbine. Hundreds of blades and 20 to 30 rows are attached to a shaft running through the turbine. When the steam strikes the blades, it causes the shaft to spin very rapidly. The plant's generator produces electricity, the end product. An electrical current is produced by spinning a magnetic field inside a coil of wire known as the stator. The stator contains three sets of wire coils placed 120 degrees apart. A rotor within the generator is spun by the turbine 60 times a second, or 3,600 times a minute. This produces 60-cycle alternating current electricity, known as AC, the standard for the United States. How does electricity get from the power plant to my house? Electricity travels at the speed of light, so it doesn't take long to get to your house. But before it does, it must go through some changes. Electricity leaves the generator at about 20,000 volts. It then passes through a step-up transformer, increasing it to transmission voltage ranging from 345,000 to 500,000 volts. Located a short distance from the power plant is a switchyard. From here, the flow of electricity is directed to individual transmission lines. Substations change the voltage to different levels for other transmission lines. Substations and switchyards are sometimes in the same location. Disconnect switches at either a substation or switchyard provide a safe means of de-energizing portions of the transmission system. High voltage transmission lines transport the electricity for hundreds of miles to substations where the electricity's voltage can be stepped down or redirected. Transformers at a substation reduce voltage to a lower level. Lower voltage distribution lines fan out from substations to local communities. Pole top or pod mounted transformers near your home reduce the voltage further so it can be used by household appliances. You can compare an electric transmission system to the road system carrying traffic through North Dakota. The interstate highways designed to carry large amounts of traffic quickly for long distances are like the big transmission lines that move high voltage electricity to various distribution points within the Northern Plains region. Other highways branch out from the interstate to move traffic to the towns, just as smaller distribution lines branch off of the large high voltage transmission lines. Finally, streets within the town carry traffic to individual homes and businesses, just as local transmission lines distribute electricity to homes and businesses for use by you, the customer. Let's review the electrical generating process. 
Lignite is burned within the plant's boiler, creating intense heat that turns water within the boiler to high pressure steam. The steam is directed through a turbine which spins a generator to produce electricity. Coming out the generator, the voltage is increased by a transformer before being sent to a nearby substation or switchyard. The electricity is transported by large high voltage transmission lines for hundreds of miles. Transformers decrease the voltage as the electricity arrives in the areas where it's to be used. And finally, smaller distribution lines fan out through communities or the countryside to deliver the electricity directly to homes, schools and businesses. What measures are taken to protect the environment? When lignite or other coals are burned to generate electricity, exhaust gases are created containing various pollutants, such as ash and sulfur dioxide. All power plants in North Dakota are equipped with either bag houses or electrostatic precipitators to remove ash from their exhaust gases. A bag house is similar to a giant vacuum cleaner, filtering out the ash in thousands of 40-foot long bags, each one foot in diameter. Electrostatic precipitators act like a magnet to pull the ash out of the exhaust gas before it's released. Both these systems remove 99% of the ash from the plant's exhaust gas before it's released out the stack. Scrubbers have been installed on many North Dakota plants to greatly reduce the amount of sulfur dioxide in their emissions. In a scrubber, a fine mist containing lime or other material is sprayed into the plant's exhaust gas to capture sulfur dioxide. In North Dakota, about $350 million has been spent to equip power plants with scrubbers and to improve scrubber efficiency. In fact, North Dakota has installed scrubbers on nearly three quarters of its electrical generating capacity, compared to eastern states, which have less than 12% of their capacity scrubbed. North Dakota is one of only a few states in the nation to meet all federal clean air standards. Is all the electricity produced in North Dakota used in North Dakota? Electricity is one of North Dakota's foremost exports. The state's power plants generate about 25 billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year, but only about 8 billion kilowatt hours are used in North Dakota. Much of the electricity produced is used by the residents of neighboring states. Although some electricity generated in North Dakota has been sold for use as far west as California, the North Dakota power plants which produce the electricity are owned and operated by investor-owned utilities and rural electric cooperatives. Utilities such as Montana Dakota Utilities Company and Ottertail Power Company primarily serve city residents. Generation and transmission cooperatives such as Basin Electric, Minn Kota, Cooperative Power and United Power Association serve rural residents. Contrary to what some people think, selling electricity is a very competitive business. North Dakota's utilities and cooperatives belong to a regional organization called MAP, which stands for Mid-Continent Area Power Pool. The MAP region encompasses all of North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska, most of South Dakota, eastern Montana, western Wisconsin, and the Canadian provinces of Saskatchewan and Manitoba. If a utility has a power plant with generating capacity beyond what is needed by customers in its service area, it may attempt to sell this surplus capacity to other utilities within the MAP system. This works to the advantage of the utility's customers because the closer the plant can be run to its full generating capacity, the more efficient it operates and the less expensive its power becomes. Each day, 24 hours a day, Operators and dispatch centers work to meet the demand for electricity by matching sellers and buyers. Those utilities with plants producing the lowest cost electricity will sell their surplus generating capacity first. The goal is to provide customers with the lowest cost power available. And while this means electricity users benefit from competition between power producers, it also means the power producers must always be concerned about the price of the product they're selling. Making electricity sounds like a lot of work, so all I have to do is flip a switch? You bet. We all use electricity, and our lives are better for it. Stop and think about all the different uses you have for electricity. What would your life be like if you didn't have electricity, or if you didn't have enough electricity? Things we use every day, like lights, hair dryers, computers, television sets, VCRs, refrigerators, and microwave ovens, simply wouldn't be possible. Electricity provides us with heat for comfort, power to make our work easier, and light to make our lives brighter and safer. 
We have become so accustomed to using electricity and having as much as we need that we seldom think about where it comes from and what is required to produce it. The next time you turn on a light switch, think of the power needed to run those lights as lignite coal that comes from beneath North Dakota's prairies.